come and listen to our tale. Take a seat, grab an ale. Four strangers when we started, stuck together, never parted, fighting monsters throughout the land, never going quite as planned. Wizard, paladin, cleric, and halfling, broom, dragon, hammer, and purse string, trying to make the world a better place, saving Aspara from creatures in space. Deals have been made, the die have been cast, will we make it out alive, the listener asks? Have a slice of shepherd's pie, it's mighty hearty, what happened last time on The Incorrigible Party? After Lushki's betrayal, the party is forced to fight Killian and his crew, repeatedly thwarting their attempts to flee with the chestplate and gauntlet. Of Kalar. Utilizing whirring blade barriers and well timed counterspells, ultimately they prevail, killing their adversaries. An act that does not go unnoticed by Isabella Good. What will happen next? The party seems vexed. Aspara, Izzy, the paladins of cultists. Thor, help us! This seems hopeless. The armor, Niogi, what is our fate? Nevertheless. Adventure awaits. A stifling breeze sends wisps of snow spiraling across the surface of the frozen lake. Plumes of smoke and steam begin to to cloud the sky above the the tree line just behind you. The warmth from the forest fire that falls are started, quickly diminishing, though, as you get further from it. And it just seemed like it burns itself out, though, consuming... The combustible splinters and tinder from Mia's blade barrier, but the the surrounding trees are just so heavily soaked with snow, more than enough to stop the fire from spreading further than the area of the fireball. What uh, type of pace are we going to want to set here across the ice? Um, I think we'll... We'll set a pretty good pace. We're not going to sprint, but we're uh, we're not going to be standing still either. We're going to sort of a, a jog, I would say. Uh, yeah, Shakar is not jogging with Buttercup. Shakar is going to... Why? I'm not going to be riding Buttercup. She is going to be walking on her own, but I'm still not going to be having her like clomp any harder than she needs to. So I, I think I'm going to express to you how thick the ice is and show you by looking at it that this is this ground is probably more solid than the ground that you would be walking on. <laughs> I'm going to show you by looking at it. It is solid. No, I figure I figure if I'm going to try to convince you, the first thing I do is say, "Use your eyes and listen to my words." And you got both senses that are going to appease you that a slight jog will not make any difference except making us get there faster. I mean, you know what they say, two to five ain't bad. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good amount of sense. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I think I'm going to start walking, and if it doesn't crack or anything, then we'll, we can move a little faster, a little bit at a time, but I'm not going to immediately jog. Do, do I think if we pick up the pace a little bit, we'll be able to get there before uh, evening? Uh, so at this at this point in the day, it is like mid afternoon. So you're gonna arrive to the camp after nightfall. Even if you travel at a fast pace, you might get there very shortly after sundown. But it will still be dark. You will be arriving at the camp in in the dark. Okay, I'll re- relay that. But you know, the faster we can get there, the better we can get this out of the way and then get a good night's sleep at the camp. I'll move a little bit faster. I am all for getting a good sleep. Yeah. All right, so fast pace then. You're going to be clipping along at like four miles an hour. But that does mean you'll take a penalty to your passive perception scores as you're traveling. But the lake, though, is, is covered in, in a thin layer of snow, right? It's only about a couple inches, uh, but enough to give you traction to, to keep up your chosen pace. So there won't be any, like, you're not slipping on the ice, or and Buttercup is fine as well trotting along at, at the, the, the quickened pace. Uh, so no difficult terrain imposed by the ice. And out in the open, right? Remember, this is it's still a, a clear and kind of blustery day. So out here you have some pretty incredible line of sight as it is just a flat, like you're looking right as flat as it can be. You're going to be able to see out to about like three miles uh, around you. So that's kind of the limit and keep in mind, though, that's like that's like spotting like a person uh, at three miles. So obviously, larger structures and or larger creatures, 
you will be able to see them from further away because there's nothing around you <laughs> right now, right? As you as you progress across this lake. So keeping the shoreline visible to your left as you're heading kind of in the southwesterly direction towards the new paladin camp is just incredibly doable. You will, even f- f- traveling as the crow flies, you will be able to keep the shoreline like in your in that three mile view for the whole the whole way. So that's not going to be a problem. And then of course northwest to your right, like it's just more lake, right? And all the way through, essentially you're looking to the largest peaks, one of which is, of course, Mount Necrosis, far, far, uh, much further north, northwest. Can we see a dwarf up there? Uh, yeah, Dwar- you see a dwarf, dwarf right on the tippy top of, of Mount Necrosis, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's on his tiptoe, he's got a one arm out with the, <laughs> with the flower. <laughs> Uh, so again, to your left, past that shore is like the wooded strip that kind of encircles the the smaller peaks. That I mean, you've actually traversed quite a bit of them already since leaving the tower only only a, a day ago. So uh, as we as we move out, I'm assuming you all want to remain uh, attentive as possible. So if you could all just maybe give me a, a perception check here as we're traveling. Twenty three for Shaft. Ten for Shakara. I'm a lot more worried about walking across the ice than seeing anything. <laughs> Trying to watch, but just can't quit thinking about the ice. 15 for Mia. Falzern really does not like the cold, um, and that's distracting him a lot. He got a four. Oh, those robes. Yeah, it's blustery. There's a, a lot of breeze coming the wind up. Wind going the ropes. right up your undercarriage yeah. there. Should have wore your long yeah, guns, Falzern. Falzern's Marilyn Monroe and in the whole way across the <laughs> 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 or maybe because you can swim really fast, you can also like slide and skate around the ice Ooh, really fast. Like a penguin so you just, yeah, on your so belly. You just, <laughs> you're just having a good old time. Does your butt oh, waddle when you walk? Are in. <laughs> oh, falzer has got that waddle. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, less than an hour out on the ice, uh, an echo uh, of a roar kind of reverberates across the lake. Shaft and Mia, with your checks, you you can nearly almost pinpoint like the direction, right? Which again is to your left, to, towards the shore. And you kind of see against the the blue of the sky, two stark white winged creatures, and they clearly have Niyogi riders. Their wings fold to their sides as they enter into a dive towards the treetops from high up. You almost lose sight of them though, as their forms kind of narrow. Right as they're they tuck in, at the last second they flare out again, though catching gusts of cold air as they swoop across the treetops. Long, thick tails kind of sending up puffs of snow as they whip against the canopy. For a brief, frightening second, the creatures they seem to be flying directly towards you, towards your incredibly exposed position on the lake. Then one of the creatures it turns, the second following. They appear to have spotted something amidst the trees. Each of them open up an elongated jaw and let out this icy blast towards the ground into the forest. And this pair of white dragons disappear below the tree line. It all happens just incredibly quickly. Ah, oh, did you see that? Uh, that, that does not look good. That was close. I thought they were rocks at first, but... <laughs> this look like dragons. Do, do you think they saw us? Ah, uh, no, we'd be dead. They're occupied with something on the ground. I, I bet someone needs saving down there. It could be Samuel's team that he sent to us. Not there. We need to get to cover. Yeah, th- we're we're too exposed. Does it look like if I head towards where they are, towards shore, would uh, sort of at an angle, would we be, uh, be able to get to cover relatively quickly, or? Do we have a, a, you said you a couple of miles. Uh, yeah, you are like two to three miles out on the, like from the shore, essentially, right? Like the limits of kind of being able to spot a singular person uh, at this tree. Like you are out in the open, completely exposed across this lake. Unless there's a way for all of us to turn invisible. We just need to pick up the pace. Uh, hold, hold that thought. Okay. I always have to... <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 Bill, that's Bill talking. Not Falzer. I can make myself invisible. 
for each level I upcast it, I can include one more person. You need four. Do we have any potions or trinkets or things? I assume, though, you have not stopped, especially after seeing them. No, and keep like moving. Keep moving. A minute yep. by goes by. A second minute goes by. Are they continuing to attack the ground? You can all give me another perception check. And this one's going to be specifically kind of listening, because you still can't see them anymore. Only 11 this time for Mia. Uh, 11 for Shaft also. 10. 12 for Falzerin. So Falzerin, you hear another roar, and what sound like additional shouts. Not from a creature, though, from like a person or a number of persons. Humanoid shouts. Correct. Okay. Again, though, incredibly far. Like, you would not be able to get there timely, in a timely manner, right? Uh, they're, they're definitely attacking someone. I, I, I don't think we should... They are not our concern. We need to look after ourselves, yeah. We can't go up against these two. We must get to Samuel and get the eyes. Okay, can we... Can we sprint? Let's let's go. I say we run for a little bit. I want to run even faster if that's possible. Um, Falzern's going to hop on Denny in case he needs to be really fast. Shaft, will the ice hold Buttercup with Mia and I on it? Oh, sure. You said that too quickly. I've seen all kinds of heavy things walk on the ice in, in this time of the year. You're safe. I will tentatively climb on top of Buttercup and see what happens. It does appear to be stable. Mia, climb on. Okay. Get up. I'll stop for a moment. You're okay. I climb on... Uh, uh, we got Hork with us, too, so... I mean, I'll, I'll climb on Horik's back. Because Horik, Horik can go five foot <laughs> faster than me. Okay, all right. Yeah, Horik, Horik will pick, we'll do a, a Yoda Luke Skywalker here thing. With, there uh, we go. With master Blaster. Uh, yeah, Master Blaster. <laughs> <laughs> runs Barter Town. Shaft says run faster. <laughs> all right, two hours out on the ice now. You've made it. Nearly 10 miles, but eight, eight or so miles at your fast pace. Specks on the horizon ahead of you come into focus. And you see a collection of four small buildings. Less, They're probably only about a mile. So they're going to be more to like your left as you kind of veer. So so the curve of the lake, you're basically like this little inlet is essentially what you're, you're crossing, right? Before it really starts to open up and, and, and widen. So you're kind of cutting across this one of the most narrow sections, right? So as, essentially, you're 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 gonna once you're gonna hit the shore, the huts are about a mile from shore, which on your current trajectory is about to your left-ish. Uh, you would you you're gonna reach them in in like another hour of your same less than another hour of your your fast pace here. Are these like true buildings or like fishing huts? From this distance, the, like they're incredibly tiny. Okay, but they're on the lake, right? There's no island that I'm aware of that's on this lake. Right, they're clearly on the ice. People live on this lake? Um, would I be aware of anybody that would be building anything out on the lake? Fishing huts or anything like that? Or is this unfamiliar to me? What I'm no, saying? no, I mean, this is like just another resource to be used with of life in the mountains, right? I mean... So, so yeah, like, I mean, and Horror kind of pipes up, Hey, just, uh, be a good, good fishing spot out there, yeah, guys? Yeah, they, we see it all the time. Are, are they going to be friendly, or? Uh, oh, who knows? I mean, let's just sort of steer clear of it a little bit, and we'll, as we go by, we can take a look. You know, Shaft, you really are not reassuring. I don't know how to be more reassuring than telling you it's going to be okay. I guess we could say uh, we're all going to die. Would that make you feel comfortable? I believe it's in your tone. Shakar, I think these mountains are much different than Shaft remembers. There's been a lot going on. Horik, can you reassure these people that we're okay? <laughs> Horik kind of walks over to you on Buttercup and, like, you know, gives Buttercup a pat on, on, on the mane. Puts a hand out to, like, give Shakar and Mia a pat on the I, shoulder. I give him a glare if he tries to touch me. <laughs> hey, uh, you be okay there, uh, 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 and he retracts his hand for, for Shakara right away. 
Ah, yeah, it would be, it'd be all right uh, down there, sir. If he touches me, he gets shocked. Just saying. <laughs> See, I think it's more of the receiver than the giver. <laughs> <laughs> As the next hour progresses, you you do periodically see more signs of the dragons. Actually, only only one of the Ugh. dragons still has a rider. It seems it's slowly flying over the trees, uh, kind of up and down the length of the forest, like along the shore, running almost like parallel with the, the way you're traveling. Uh, it seems to be searching for something but has yet to notice you on the ice, uh, clearly transfixed with whatever is going on in, in the wooded area. You know, if if it comes down to it and these dragons find us, perhaps one of us should, should put this armor on. It might be our only hope. What, the, the Sammy armor? The, the big blue light special? No. Yeah, you want to be vaporized? That shouldn't happen again now that we told Samuel we have it. True, we don't know what they're looking for, though. How far are we from the shore? This is taking forever. A couple miles, probably. Ed. Well, all I'm saying is that those dragons are going to be an incredibly powerful beast to fight against. Perhaps the most powerful foe we've ever faced. Uh, we might need every chance we can get. Well, we're spent, and they're distracted with something. We just have to keep our eyes forward. Uh, I, I agree. I'm just saying, if worse comes to worse, if they find us. It's not like I'm carrying it. Let's see. We get closer to these buildings, we can see if it's a safe haven, maybe. But let's keep pressing forward. Three hours out on the ice. And you're now 400 or so feet from this collection of buildings. And yes, uh, Shaft, as you surmise, it does, they do look like they are like little fishing huts. Uh, each of them are about a 15 by 15, no larger than that. From here, uh, even from 400 feet away, like they look worn down, right? They look old. They don't look like they've been used in, in quite some time. Emily, could you roll me a weather die, please? <gasps> Yes, I would be happy to. Nine. And as you are approaching these huts, that gentle breeze that had uh, been blowing for the last few hours starts to pick up and intensify, and the snow around you gets picked up into just huge swirls across the surface of it. And now with these intense winds... You all have, uh, it gives disadvantage on ranged weapons using projectiles. And perception checks that use hearing uh, have disadvantage. Small flames are quickly extinguished. And it's very difficult for dragons to see any amount of distance. Yes. Double disadvantage. <laughs> I would also say it's very difficult on your broom. Okay. And, like, it is, like, this wind is buffeting you. You have to lean into it like that type of kind of wind that starts to pick up. Uh, I say we head towards the fishing buildings, try to get some shelter. Will they not blow over in this wind? Listen, we'll be out of sight. Let's just collect ourselves real quick. I, I think you might have a good a good idea. I I can barely fly in this. It's the only cover we have, just for a minute. Head that direction. As you continue, the the these eddies, like these snow eddies that the wind has picked up, and like these little tiny cyclones in some areas, kind of blustering across the ice into the to the shore. It's like a, it like creates like this blanket of like white right, momentarily, right, as, as this snow is just picked up, and as you know, one gust recedes and another kind of picks up to take its place, in between the, the kind of gap in, in the, the snow movement, you see a dragon breaking the tree line at the lake's shore. Single Niyogi rider urging it forward. It's on all fours as it breaks into a run towards you. And as it moves, its wings unfurl as it, with a leap into the wind, flapping its wings to take flight. The wind kind of catches it, right? And, and like blows it off kilter as it's trying to right itself slowing it, slowing it down because of the weather. But it just finds 
you know, finds the gusts and, and, and rides the, the, the wind uh, currents or the up currents and hurls itself towards you. And at no, keeping like 20 feet above the lake's surface, right? It's tail dragging and swishing across the ice. It's frigid spines on the end of it, scraping this trail behind them. And it's like 1,200 feet away from you. Falzern, how many people can you make invisible right now? Shikara, you said you could handle yourself. Falzern, get the four of you. Leave me out. I can I can uh, temporarily be unseen. Shaft, I can sh- I can shackle to you at any time as well. We need to not re- forget that. I can I can make myself and two others. Okay, so me, you, Horik, Shakara takes care of herself. Shaft is on his. We need to hide and not take this fight. I agree. Dismount, Mia. I will dismiss Buttercup. Okay, let's go. And I I just go side side by side with Falzer in there. All right. Are we planning on doing this before we get to the buildings? That's what I, that's what I want to clarify. So so this so at the rate the dragon's flying, you like it'll be on you in minutes, but it's not going to be immediate, right? So it's got to see us. Oh yes, of course. It, it's very clear that it's seen you and is coming towards you, but you are much closer to the huts than it is to you. So are you staying out on the ice, or are you making a break for the buildings? What what exactly is the the plan? I mean, guys, if we go invisible and gather in the huts, he's just gonna, he's just gonna flame breath the huts. Like we just gotta keep running, but but invisible. Yeah, I think you guys stay outside of the huts. I'll get close to it in case I need to duck in. Meet at the meet at the tree line. See that point off in the distance, and I look at like maybe the largest tree straight ahead, like the the way we were going. So you're saying beeline it to shore. Yeah. You guys invisible. Okay. How far is shore from us right now? Uh, you, at a normal pace, you will get to the shore uh, and some semblance of tree cover in less than an hour. You still have a bit of time out on the ice. Like, it's not like five minutes and you're at shore kind of thing, right? Uh, at least, sorry, con- that, and that's continuing the direction that you want to go towards the paladin camp. Obviously turning, you could get to shore quickly, but you would be turning towards the direction that the dragon is, is flying at you. Oh. Although, obviously, Falzern's invisibility lasts for an hour, so that will get those invisible by that spell too sure, no problem, and still rem- and still be invisible. Mia will say, Shaft, what's your plan again? Uh, I can make myself invisible uh, through hiding. Nature's Veil? No, Nature's Veil will only do it for... Six seconds. Uh, the beginning <laughs> of my next turn. But there is one where I can... Hi, blend oh, in with nature. I've used it. Yeah, hide in plain sight. But that takes. I'm trying to figure out where it is so I can. I think that takes ten minutes. I do too. I just think they've seen us. They know we're heading toward these buildings. They're gonna take out the buildings with their fire. Like they're not. They're gonna assume invisible or not. We're in there, right? So. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna say you guys go invisible. I'm gonna lay down. And sort of pack some snow around me, but not by the buildings, like a, a no, distance right away. No, right where I'm exactly. at right now. We know, I know where you're going, so I'll do that. And then if uh, if they get close and things start going bad, I'll 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 do what I can. Is there any noticeable landmark the way that we're facing that I could say like, hey, this is where we meet? I'll find you. Okay, Shaft, I will stay with you. Yeah, there's no distance on the invisibility, right? Okay. I, I'm invisibile, invisibiling myself, anyway. Okay, and how does yours work, Shagar? Same, an hour. Same, okay, you just do it to yourself. So, Shaft, sorry, to be clear, like, if it takes you 10 minutes to do your hide and play, like, you don't have 10 minutes. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to lay down. You said there's, like, two inches of snow sort of piled along. I'm just going to, I'm a little guy. I'm going to sort of try to cover myself up a little bit so I'm not, uh, you know. <laughs> okay, just, again, keep in mind, like, you look at the dragon, the dragon looks at you, you look at the dragon, right? Like you And you just hide yourself in snow. <laughs> yeah. If uh, I make myself invisible and it says anything the target is wearing or carrying is invisible as long as it's on the target's person. So just hold if shaft. If I carry shaft, <laughs> would he then be invisible? No, he is not an object. Nah. You sure? I'm I can't objectify sure. him. Well, yes, but can you wear him? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> can I hide him in my cloak? No, it does. It doesn't quite work that way. Nah, that would be too. 
That's okay. That's okay. I have an idea. If I had a fifth level spell slot, I could get Shaft too, but I used it. We're, s we're still like sprinting and all these ideas are being thrown out and like it's just been crazy. Falls are in. The dragon seen us. Like, let me be a distraction and I can zap to Shaft at any time. So you, you make Shaft invisible with Horik. You guys keep trucking. Shakara, stay with me if you want, but I gotta do something. Yeah, if the dragon gets close, you can always pop over to wherever we are. Exactly. And you just keep moving and I keep popping. So make Shaft invisible, Falzer. Why don't you pop? You can't stop. It's it's not going to count as magic. He's going to stay invisible. Y you, you guys have to go. And so, like, Mia just kind of, like, slows her pace a little bit, lets them run ahead. And just sort of, as we get closer to the buildings, Mia's going to maybe pop into them or see, see what happens, what the dragon's thinking. That was a lot. Can you give me a, a Cole's notes of exactly what is happening? So, Shaft and Falzern are on the broom and zipping zipping away, right? Hork as well. Well, Hork, the three of them can't get on the broom. Hork and Shakara are running. Okay, okay. With Mia? Um, Mia's on the ground running now toward the buildings. Buttercup is dismissed? Buttercup is dismissed. All right. Who's going invisible and who's doing it when? <laughs> As soon as I see Falzerin make him and Hork and Shaft invisible, I will go invisible. Okay. You guys have to have uh, Hork stay within so far. No, of there's no range. None of that. Okay. I just can't cast any spells once I've cast this spell, or can't, else it you guys can't do any actions. Basically, yeah. And then, and then suddenly, all that the this dragon and the Neogi Rider see on the ice is Mia running. It's quickly gaining on you, right? It just flies incredibly fast, and it seems like the it's like the the winds shift direction, and it's now like the wind gusting behind it, propelling it even further and faster towards you, hurtling across the surface of the ice, and you get within like a hundred feet of the fishing huts, and it it is on you. It's it's two hundred feet back. And it closes the distance, 150. It closes it 100 feet behind you. And it suddenly, you all see, like, its wings, they kind of pivot themselves down, and its claws make contact with the ice again, and it skitters itself to a stop. And it stops chasing you as Mia and the Invisible Crew make it to this cluster of huts and it's stopped itself and, and, and when it finally skids to a stop and it, it, it's like um like a scared animal like a paws like treading itself backwards as quickly as it can like giving putting more distance now between you and it i mean we knew it was a neogi rider right it is a neogi rider yes like it got incredibly close to you but you you make it to these huts and here can everyone give me a perception check please 17 for shaft 13 falls in. 15 for Shikar. Mia's closest, but she got a 7. <laughs> so 12 and up can see that there, there looks like there's some type of writing etched or carved into the side of these huts. It's kind of obscured by some frost. Easy, like if you just kind of wipe the frost away, you kind of uncovered this strange, like alien looking writing. It's not common. It's the only way, oh, the only reason, the only person that can read it is Shikara etched and carved on each of these buildings is failure, danger. It says danger. Could I hear her? You think we're close enough still? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you all, nobody kind of like split off, right? And, and you all just kind of kept moving forward. Yeah. 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 Roughly. Yes. You you may need to shout a little bit over the wind. What do you mean, danger? The buildings. There's writing on it. It says danger. Well, to them. So let's go in. The, the dragon and the Neogi Rider, now it's like, it's keeping this distance away from this collection of huts. But it, it is now kind of like almost pacing back and forth. Uh, it takes flight and, and flies, you know, 50 feet one way and then kind of back the other way. It's almost just like it's encircling the cabins, but still, it's like it's clearly not getting any closer than 100 feet. We're going through this ice, aren't we? I'd rather, I I'd rather take my chances with whatever's in here than, than that dragon. Let's let's try and find cover. Mia looks up at the Niyogi. They can see me, right? You only, that's right. I look up at him. Come and get me! I'm the danger here! And I just kind of slowly backstep while still looking at it. Wait, wait! Let's watch what happens. 
<laughs> you see that uh, the, the dragon opens its mouth again and lets out a blast of its icy breath, but it just cannot reach. It's only a 60-foot cone. It cannot reach you. So it's like 40 feet from you, right, between you and the end of the effects of its its breath weapon, and you're, you know, unfazed, out of its area of effect. I am not going any closer to those huts. Guys, just get to shore. Get away from these. Let's go. And I'll just... I'll just keep sort of slowly backing out as a distraction, because I want them to go and then just zap to shaft. It seems like we're protected here. If we go... Protected in the danger building? Shaft, keep going! Shaft, fly inside on Denny. Or walk, you are little. Get me over close to the... Do something now, I can't stand here forever. Jump off and head over towards the... I I, I, I can cast a spell. Right? Because he's the one who has to concentrate on invisibility. Uh, no, that's not correct. It will ruin it. If Falzerin casts a spell or makes an attack, it cancels it for everybody, but I believe the individual creatures are also fall under the same stipulations. Mm-hmm. Oh. But Shaft, you gotta stay invisible for me, please. I won't cast... Okay. I won't cast a spell. <laughs> I will head over to one of the buildings stealthily. I'll rely on just my regular stealth. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I know. Here we go. (laughs) What we've been waiting on. (laughs) Finally, it took a blizzard and a dragon, but I've done it. (laughs) Give me a, give me a stealth here. And so like these, these huts, again, they're in disrepair holes kind of near the bottom of where it hits the ice in some sections. Like, like the wood is like rotted away. So like leaving like small, like jagged openings, openings, maybe like four inches at the bottom of some of these. Uh, one of which has a loose door that is just banging and smashing in the wind. I only got a 20, so uh, I'll go up and see if I can see inside. The closest one. And I'm going sort to of, sort of get up close to it and try to look and see if I can see through boards or underneath. Not actually go through a door or anything. Just try to see if I can visually see anything inside. There are no windows on any of these huts, just just the door. And, and this one this one does have the, the door that's kind of flapping open in, in the wind. And as it bangs shut, bang, 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 as it flies open and close, peering inside of it, you see that like there's a there's a wooden plank floor, and it does look like there in the floor there is a trap door kind of access. Um, something that you would pull up with like a ring, you know, that sits flush with with the floor kind of thing. In addition to like a small like pot belly stove. Okay, I'll go in. Okay, sorry. Oh, sorry. Not quite done. In the corner. <laughs> in the corner, you can clearly see and anyone that would also peer into it from the outside can see the remains. It's clearly this creature is dead, but it's it's this insect uh, insectoid looking like long blue and and with tinges of red uh, kind of creature. It's got like this big, um, ho- it's almost hooded like a cobra. Along its belly though, which would be like a soft under part over top, or sorry, underneath the carapace, right? It's in- it's It's been cut open it's, and its insides have been like removed. You're looking at like the, the empty inside of, of this creature. But it does clearly look like it's dead. Uh, it also, also like looks like it has uh, like a layer of ice has formed over it. So it's been dead a while. Yes, it's clearly not been disturbed or and it has been dead in, in quite some time. In fact, everything inside of this hut has that same layer of ice over it. Like frost, you know you know what I mean? Okay. Oh, I will walk in the door quickly, look around, go over to the, the hatch, and crack it open a little bit just to see what's underneath. Uh, it does look like there is a fishing hole that has kind of like frozen over. You can clearly see where like it was cut into the ice before it, the, the wintry conditions have just frozen it back over. Again, signs of it not having been utilized as a fishing hut in, in quite some time. Okay, I'll, I'll lean back out and I'll go, you can come in, there's a dead thing in here, but there's nothing else. The ice is sound. It seems to be. It's a wooden floor. They say danger, though. We just, we have to go. The dragon is not attacking us here. I'll go in to see what Shaft saw. Yeah, Falzern will Falzern will fly uh, with Denny over towards Shaft. Is. Mia will continue to step 
back, I'm going to step into the middle of these huts. I'm assuming if we get inside, we can talk to each other. The wind's not quite as bad. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you could pull, and it does look like the door that uh, was open, like, it still has a latch. It had just become unlatched. So you could you could fully close it up and, like, latch it up to, to protect yourself from, from the wind. So, Mia, you're basically out here, like, making yourself known as the target. Like I'm making, keeping myself known and keeping an eye on this dragon. I don't want anything to happen unexpectedly, so they can investigate. I'll just stand out here. Okay, are you guys here? Who's here? Yeah, yeah, I'm right here, Shaft. I am. Hey, hey, we're in here, I tell you. What is that thing? I don't know. Look, uh, some kind of a bug thing. Hey, it uh, looks like a bit of a hammer. Hey, I told you about them things before. Where, where have you seen these things, Hork? Hey, uh, you all over the mountain and uh, they look the uh, Easter, huh? Do they, are they like pets of the Niyogi? I, I, I didn't know they're uh, mighty dangerous. Ah, so if we see one, kill it. I don't know. I, I look back out. Is the dragon still out there? It is still out there, yeah. Well, we might as well take a look at the other huts and see what's in them. All right, let's, let's just all go together and... and I don't know. We can. I don't think the dragon's gonna go away. Guys, uh, I can't really hear you, but I'm still out here distracting and stuff. What's the plan? From right next to you, I say, we're checking out the other huts. Whoa! <laughs> Frick! Scare me, Shakara. Okay, I'm just gonna keep kind of slowly backpedaling away from these buildings and see what the dragon does. Don't get too far away. I think I know why they are not coming close. And that's because... A creature inside the first hut. A dragon is scared of a creature that can fit in that hut? That is also dead, so yes. Stay here. That's not good, though. Okay. I walk away while she's still talking. I move on to the wow, next hut. what is a dragon afraid of? I'm, like, talking as if she's still there. <laughs> <laughs> are, are all the, the, the invisible entourage still trying to stick close to Shaft as he's moving to these huts? I'm letting him go into the hut first, because he can sneakier more than I can. Okay, you want to stealth in again there, Shaft? Yeah. Uh, oh, man, 14. Oh, goodness. I know. Wow. <laughs> Terrible. I feel like I'm dancing and screaming. <laughs> <laughs> so you unlatch this building and pull it open. And other than the dead Remoraz... You see a very similar scene, but instead of where the body was in a similar location and, and pile, there's like a pile of, they look like long, like shards of ice. Some of them are like upwards of like two feet long, uh, jagged in some areas as if they've been snapped off of something or, or, or hatcheted off of uh, like a larger piece of ice, but they just kind of lay in a, in a pile. And again, you still have the like the the potbelly stove, and there's a couple benches, like seated benches in here, and the the trap door on the floor. Can we tell how they died? I mean, other than the fact that they're cut open. Uh, if you would like to go in, like, uh, do an investigation, you you absolutely can. I have a twenty-one. I rolled an mental twenty. The only one for the night. As you're looking over, good. You're only one of them. As you're looking over the dead Remoraz, like looking at where it's been split open and, and its wounds. It's very clear that the wounds that were inflicted, or the incision that was inflicted, is very clean and, and very surgical and not from, like, a sword or, or a larger weapon. So more like it was dissected? Correct. And there are just no organs inside of it. I, I do want to examine the crystal icicle shard things. Okay, so uh, this Shaft makes it clear that this one's fine. So you b basically just put your head in, Shaft, and that's it. Yeah, I put my head in there, and I I, I say, it's just ice. I'm going to the next one. Shakara, um, you want to investigate again? Mm-hmm. I had ten this time. Uh, with a ten, as you're looking over the pile, like they, because of the cold, they've Start, they've like frozen together, right? Uh, you can still make out the individual, some of the individual shapes of it and stuff, right? So I don't know how hands on you're going to get, but like you can, I mean, you could wrench a, a, sh a shard free of 
the larger mass of a pile, right? Because now it's like one, it's like one solid object now because it's kind of frozen together. Yeah, I'll first kind of like tentatively touch that, reach out and touch it, see if it's going to hurt me in any way. And if it doesn't, I will try and wrench one out. Well, considering Shakara is petrified of ice, give me a constitution saving throw. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It does seem like it's it's just ice. And, and when you grab a hold of it, uh, it doesn't hurt you or anything. And you can, like, snap off a, a shard. And again, it's just essentially you're holding, like, an icicle. Can I, like, try and jab it into the ground and see if it shatters or if it what it does? Okay, sure. You want to, like, smack it against the wooden floor? Yeah. All right. Uh, go ahead and just roll me a roll me an attack. So she's not invisible anymore. No, she's still invisible. So this is not like a an attack attack. What do you want me to add to that to my strength? Just just, just add your strength. Yeah. It's a twenty three. All right. You you give it you give it like a whack, and it kind of holds, and then you give it another a second one, and it just snaps in half. Interesting. Horik, what are these? Uh, okay. Yeah. You uh, the door. You just see the door kind of clearly being like moved by a person right obviously you can't see it so it's like catches court cat invisibly catches the door in the wind and then you see the door kind of shift open hear the clomp of his his feet onto the the wood i i know i understood that <laughs> i want to try to wrench another one free and bring it with me to the next cabin shaft opening this third hut in here, you whip it open, and you find a Niyogi, frozen solid, completely encased in ice. In addition to the the, uh, the standard kind of potbelly stove, the trap door in, in the wooden wooden floor, and and like a bench kind of kicked off to the side. It looks like it's it's actually kind of like, it's not like broken in half, but you know like put a little extra force, it would be you it would snap. It's not like it's standing there as if like. In, like you found in the camp from the basilisk, it's not like turned to stone. It's literally like a ch it's in a chunk of ice. Hmm. I'll walk in, get a cl little bit closer look. Does it look like it's, uh, is its feet still on the ground or is it in some kind of a, like it, it was broken out of a hunk of ice and moved there? Or was it sitting there and then ice was around it? You know what I'm getting at? I do what you, I do know what you mean. It does look like it's still standing. I'll open the hatch up, look, see if it's just the same. You do see what is the frozen over, a frozen over fishing hole in this as well. I'll walk back out. Got a frozen bug in this one. Another Niyogi. What is powerful enough to freeze something in place? Uh, spells? Uh, dragon? Before you continue, Shakara, as you pull that second piece off, you kind of uncover like something that you kind of miss when you're investigating, right? But now that you've freed some of the like ice debris from the larger pile, it looks like there's a section of it that is is like humanoid. It's still ice, but it's almost like there's like an abdomen devoid of limbs or a head, kind of in this amidst this pile of the, these other shards of ice. I pull more shards off. Sure, if you'd like to to try to uncover and find what, what you can. It's literally, what, uh, as you do, which you easily can just kind of snap these, right? It just looks like like kind of a, a, a segment of, of an abdomen from like the, or just above the belly button to like maybe the collarbone. It's clearly cracked too, kind of across it, but it's it's really the only, only recognizable piece, or, or, you know, in amidst these crystals, these icicles. Horik, you still here? Hey, hey, I'm here, Shagara. You see this? You kind of see some of the shards you've broken off kind of shift, right, as he's clearly, like, prodding along. Hey, uh, what the hell are we at? No, what? Hey, what the hell are we at? <laughs> hey, uh, Shagara, <laughs> come on, you say, get in here, hey. I go, oh, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> and then I walk over. Yeah, what, what, what's up? <laughs> I had to do that. He's saying, "What the hell is it?" It's That's a what I was bug. asking him. Oh. <laughs> Guys, or she was saying, "What the hell is it?" Too. <laughs> what's taking so long? We gotta do something. We found a piece of body. Hold on. What? Falzin, what are you doing? 
I don't know. <laughs> concentrating. <laughs> He's concentrating. <laughs> He's just sitting out in the snow, snow piling up around his body, so he's a nice little snow, Falzern snowman. I'll help you. Falzern, come here. All right, so Falzern will, um, will go toward where he hears uh, Shakar's voice, open up the door, come into the tent, or the, the hut, I should say. Falzern, in that first hut, we saw some strange creature. It looked like it had been dissected and pulled apart. Look what we found in this one. Underneath these ice crystals. And Chef said he saw a frozen Nyogi in the next. So, uh, does this basically just look like ice that's shaped like someone's abdomen, or is it like an actual abdomen of a humanoid that is frozen? The former. It's definitely different than the Nyogi encased. There's no meat (laughs) <laughs> in this ice abdomen. <laughs> it is. It does look like it is a solid chunk of ice. Okay, so it's like frozen water that is shaped like a, an abdomen of something. By all appearances. Does Falzerin know anything about that Remoraz as far as... Does it have an ability to freeze, freeze things like this? You can give me a uh, nature check, I guess. So could Shaft, or so could anybody that's seen the Remorans, if you'd like, all like to. Arcana check, you said? Um. <laughs> 17 for nature. Uh, 16 for Falzerin. Four for Shakara. Shakara has no idea what's going on. <laughs> Shaft and Falzerin. Uh, Falzerin, again, from your your uh, vast studies, and uh, Shaft, from maybe from uh, recalling some stories that Hork has, has told you. It doesn't, like, the, that's not what a Remoraz does, right? A Remoraz, while they have... They kind of have like this internal heat that they are always utilizing to, to keep them going. They don't they don't like exp- they don't have any type of breath weapons as, as far as you know or anything like that. So if anything, Remorize would do the opposite. Like they they emit heat. They don't freeze things. Correct. Is this something native to the mountains, or is this something that's alien? Alien. <laughs> yeah, the Rem- yeah, the Remorize would be something that would be considered to be native to the mountains. So I have at least heard of them in some capacity. Yeah. Okay. Are they are they rare? Are they something I would not have ever ran into? I don't think you would. Uh, and again, Horror kind of mentions that, like, specifically, like, they like the lake and the ice area, right? Yeah, they are rare, but here you would come here to, to try to hunt them kind of thing. Okay. Would it realistically be something that I would think uh, an ice dragon would be, like, terrified of? Like, do, do I think that a, a dragon would behave this way if it thought a Remoraz were here? Judging by the size of the dragon that the Neogui is riding and the si- versus the size of the Remoraz, it doesn't. It's not adding up. Okay. So there's something else going on here that's terrifying. Either the Neogi or the dragon or both. Mia, could you give me a perception check, please? Yep. I'm just going to move my character back another 20 feet or so, slowly backing up watching its every move, seeing if it decides to do something. And it, it seems to be, like, circling with you, rotating around that kind of 100-foot circumference. Um, perception is 17. You kind of make out as you're keeping an eye on the dragon and and keeping the attention of it, too, is, is honestly right. the most important thing. Behind it, far where it came out from the tree line, you see... It looks like there's a, a number, like five humanoids coming out of the tree line. One of which looks like they have a child slung over their shoulder, like a very small figure. I'll uh, I'll speak to the invisible people around me where I don't know where they are. I'm right I'm right by you as I'm walking together. Oh wow, chef, that scared oh. me. Uh, look, there's there's people, there's people coming this way. That's not good. Yeah, I would think not good. Um, they're not afraid of the dragon, so yeah, they're that's not good. They're probably under Neogi influence or something. Uh, we should get going, guys. Yeah, let me look in this last place, and then why don't you come in with me? They'll think you went in here, and then we'll take off invisible, and you can port to me. The dragon will still think you're in the building. That's a good idea, Shaft. Okay, um... We could make a break for it with Mia safe in here. Yeah, they think she's in the building, but she's really with us about a mile away. Which 
way is the door or is there a window? Like, which way would I be looking? Would I be able to keep an eye on this dragon? It's circling, so I'm just... Yeah, no, there are, there are no uh, windows uh, to the huts, but the, the door opens westward. As, but as, you, as you've positioned yourself right and as this dragon is rotating, uh, it's, it's like south of the hut. So if you were at the threshold, you could certainly keep an eye on, on it. But from within, you would be blocking your line of sight to the dragon, the Neogi Rider, and the figures approaching from the tree line. I, I'll just stay out here till you guys take off and then maybe, you know, count to 100 and then go in and then teleport or something, you know? That's fine. Okay. Okay. I'll look in the last one then. How long till the figures will get to us, do we think? Uh, yeah, as you all kind of take a look, uh, you can clearly see them. And they're also fighting the winds, and it does look like they're approaching fairly slowly. I, I don't want to say that it doesn't seem like they're not hurrying, but it seems like they are trying to move and not draw the dragon's attention. Oh, so they are kind of afraid of the dragon. They're keep, yeah, they're keeping like as, clearly keeping as low as, as they can to the ice and uh, appear to be just making as much ground uh, as quickly but uh, as undetected as possible. Okay. So, timeline? Uh, I would say they would be, at their current pace, like under five minutes they would reach you. Because it's about 1,500, 1,700 feet or so, right? So the direction we want to go to get to shore, would that be taking us strictly towards them? No, they're the other way. Yeah, they're they're kind of like, if you're facing the direction you want to go, they're still to your left, to the sh- like that whole shoreline to your left. Okay. So we're checking the last hut. Yep, last hut. You open this last door. And are you all looking? You're just kind of all peering over the threshold? I'm watching the people with Mia. I'm staying outside, yeah. I'm I'm curious. Falzern's curious what's in this last hut. All right, so those those looking then, if you uh, want to be stealthy, you can roll me another stealth. 27 for Shaft. Uh, 19 for Falzern. So Shaft, you kind of creak the door open a crack, right, as you have been, and peer inside. Again, wooden floor, uh, a trap door in the middle of it. Now in, in one corner to the right, there's a collection of four, you can only really describe them as large ice balls. Each of them are kind of nearly like three feet in diameter. They're, they're more of like an ovally shape. Honestly, picture like, they're kind of snow globey though, because they're, they're, the ice in it is completely clear. Inside, there's a collection of pale blue crystals or, or ice shards and they they seem to have like specks of red and red and orange in them the crystals look as if they've sprouted from the bottom of of the 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 kind of globe the ice globe almost like it's bloomed like a flower within the ice there is a fifth ice ball that lays cracked in half completely devoid of any of these pale blue crystals. Do these look like Oh, eggs? Jesus, I didn't know you were there. <laughs> no, this is Bill talking to Leland. Oh. <laughs> sorry. Do they look like eggs? They do have like an oval kind of elongated uh, egg shape, yes. You said they're about three feet tall. They're quite large, that's right. There's four of them and plus the fifth cracked one. Shaft, this, those look like eggs. Yeah. Uh, what on earth... What would they belong to? They're ice. I, I don't know. Should we just leave them be, or should we take a look inside? Uh, did I hear eggs, guys? We need to go. Yeah, if this is a nest, we, we gotta go. Yeah, it's probably not worth messing with. Let's get out of here. We know they're here. Does it resemble anything that Falzern's read about? Just because you are, or you've seen the, the Remoraz, like, the size of one of these things... Its diameter, like its 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 uh, proportions, remind you of, of like a similar sized egg that a remoraz may come from, but it's you've never heard of one being infused or, 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 or having like crystals grown inside of it or, or being comprised of ice. Yeah, something about this doesn't seem right, Shaft. I, I don't I don't know what these could belong to or how they would have been created. Well, it's an, another thing to think about. Let's. I, I, I think we need to get out of here. Yeah, let's go. So we walk out, and I see these people coming. Right. I look over, and I look back at the other shore. I go, we need to go that way, and I point the other direction. I don't know which way you're pointing. Yeah. That way, towards the, the direction we were headed when we came here. 
Let's go. Well, just go, Shaft, and I'll I'll give you a head start, and I'll catch up. All right. And, uh, Horik, where are you? Hey, uh, right here, right here. I reach around, sort of touching for him, and... Oh, sorry about that, buddy. Uh, I'm gonna climb up on your back. Let's hey, go. Hey, Hubis. <laughs> right, yeah, well, it, it wasn't... I didn't mean to. So, Mia, are you trying to now remain out of sight of the approaching people, or are you still making yourself a display for the dragon and the Niogi? I think I'm going to stay displayed. So I was at the edge of the door so I could hear what they're saying, but I'm not particularly interested in all this stuff. I'm just sort of, like, trying to bide time. Because they're stealthing, looking afraid of this dragon, so that's a good thing. I know the dragon's not going to come to where I am, it seems like, so... You see, the, the, a number of the figures have drawn longbows now, and they're knocking arrows and drawing back on them as they, as they, they approach this dragon. Three of them kind of let loose an arrow at it. The winds catch it, though, and, and sling the arrows off target as they immediately go in to draw another one. And these arrows kind of land off like 20 feet to the left of the Niyogi and this, this, this dragon. And, you know, drawing its attention finally as it turns towards them. Perfect. So their attention's that way. Now, now's our chance. <laughs> Come on, Horik, run. Okay, are you all going to start, are the invisible people going to start sprinting again? Yep. Yeah. As Shakara and Horik break into this run, you know, stepping on, on the ice. Shakara, you hear something you haven't heard the entire time on the ice. You hear a crack. Oh, no. I knew it! <laughs> <laughs> just a twig. <laughs> As like around where you're stepping, the ice starts to like jut up. Uh, a large section of it kind of almost like propels you up under your invisible foot, right? And you can make me athletics check to keep on your feet and keep moving forward. 13. You catch your footing uh, on the other side of kind of where these crystals have started to form and jut up and the snow starts to collect and pile and congeal and the, the layers of the ice on the lake they separate behind you and you're as you're running you know you like you can see the sloshing of the water as the ice just shifts and opens and a creature claws and crawls up and through and out of the water and the ice these crystals kind of forming into it and it makes a a huge sized like it looks like the dead remoras that you saw but it's it's comprised of ice shards it more resembles like uh an, uh, like how an ice elemental would pull itself together but clearly in the form of a, of a remoraz uh this must be the danger <laughs> <laughs> so the invisible people like it doesn't see you because you're invisible it's just you know you've you've attracted it from the vibrations right and kind of the movement that's been going on here so really all it does is it it sees mia and as this is happening, you hear, like, yelling from the approaching people, right? And now they're within, like, 500 feet of you. And Mia, you you, you recognize a few of them. You recognize Captain Silas Grohl and Lance and Hannigan. Each of them, longbows in hand, pelting arrows at the Niogi and the dragon. And uh, 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 the fifth, uh, a fifth person that you, you don't recognize, two of them you don't recognize, right? There's five of them. That figure they had over their shoulder, they kind of throw it down on the ice and it's the little goblin that you saw trapped behind Falzern's wall of force at the Niogi cave and it's struggling it's bound you can't quite make out what it's saying but it's clearly like mouthing words and the wind catch not letting them through but this the the paladin here pulls out a dagger and holds it to the goblin's throat and the Niogi on the dragon as it's you know starting to approach them and dodging the arrows in the wind it stops short again for the second time as the the paladin again the the exchange you can't you can't quite get the words out of what the what make them out distinctly from what the paladins are saying but the niogi on the dragon stops and you know dagger brandished to this goblin's throat the niogi takes off on the dragon and flies away no longer a threat for now but you still have this ice remoraz to deal with as it can only see you Mia. We can roll initiative. Psst. Hey, are you still listening? You want to keep up with the incorrigibles? 
Our website, incorrigibleparty.com, has all of our links. Twitter, Facebook, Discord, Instagram. Sometimes we're Twitchers, too. You want to support our show? We have a Patreon where you can get exclusive content, early access to episodes, and more. Thanks for your support and helping our show grow. We want to thank Tabletop Audio for ambient sounds and music. We want to thank James Merce Music for our intro song. And our sponsor, Critical Hit Design. Visit criticalhitdesign.com. Happy adventuring!